Okay, so sa module 18, we will discuss uh, staffa, no? swindling and other deceits. These are very important, no? and batas pambansa bilang 22, these are very common, very, very common crimes, as well as malicious mischief. Okay, sige. Uh, we will have a short break after this, okay? So that after this, we will have 19, 20, 21, 20, 24 na lang. So maybe ma... I can finish this before 5 o'clock. Okay. Estafa. What is estafa? That the accused defrauded another by abuse of confidence or by means of deceit and that damage or prejudice capable of pecuniary estimation is caused to the offended party or third person. Okay. Isa-isahin natin ang elements. Um, estafa... Ano, paano ba ito? Um, Istafa is the, the, the core element of the crime Istafa is deceit. No? Pangluloko. Okay? You were able to err, you will, you were able to gain something out of pangluloko. Out of deceit. Out of scheme. Out of um, trickery. Okay? Then that is estafa uh, you, you you use some form of machination you use some form of trickery in order to get money from other person the most common no the most common um, kind of estafa is the one that involves checks okay check eh? bank checks um you issue a check, no? You issue a check in exchange of a good, okay? For example, you want to have a furniture, no? Delivered at your house. And you issue a check, no? In exchange of the furniture, you issued a check to, to supposedly pay, no? Supposedly pay the amount of the furniture delivered to your house. But in truth and in fact you know that the check has no cash backing has no funds available no or no adequate funds available for it to be um endorsed and for it to be processed accordingly so diba, there is an yes mr tolentino do you have any question Yes, sir. I have a question, sir, regarding sa staff, sir. Yeah. If if someone try to loan in an online application, sir, then uh, the the loaner or katong yung nagbibigay po ng loan is nagtetret na sa yung is it valid as staff, sir, or a theft? There is no again. There is no staff or theft. What I understand is that the lender no the lender the online lender is threatening you or any other person to pay that is not there is no deceit there because you already know the, the, the contract is of loan so wala namang wala namang deceit if the way they um the way they collect no the way they collect the money is through threat or any form of um, vexatious um, ways. So, uh, at most, no, at most, those kind of schemes coming from online lenders is violative of the uh, Data Privacy Act because most of the um, lenders will will refer your account to a third party individual. And this third-party company will be the one who is going to pester you in collecting the amount. So, there is no estafa because the, the, it is a parang... The transaction is, is very straightforward. You loan something, then there is an interest, and there is a time whereby you're going to pay. There is no deceit there because that is clear. What is your problem is the manner of them collecting. And then that is covered by a separate law. 
may most most if not that is under the DPA, the Data Privacy Act. But for Estafa, the transaction itself is tainted with um, deceit. In my example, the ba? In my example, the the furniture were delivered because there was a check issued in return, no? Parang kabilaan. There is an exchange of checks and the uh, furnitures, but the deceit there or ang pangluloko there is from the person who issued a worthless check, because. As a owner of a checking account, you know how much is the remain. You, you are you are supposed to know how much is the remaining account, amount in your bank account, no, on your checking account. So if you issued, let's say, worth one million check as a payment of the goods you purchase, and you know that the only amount or the account that is um, remaining in your checking account is only ten thousand pesos. Then that is really a form of cheating. No, there's cheating. Deceit is cheating. Okay. Um, for example, another form of estafa, estafa through falsification, neva? Right? Estafa through falsification. Uh, you want to obtain loan. Okay, so let's go back to a loan. You want to obtain loan, and then in loan in your loan application, you forge the signature of another individual who is a member of a cooperative also then because of that forged document no um our money was issued to you that can be a case of estafa class all i want you to remember for estafa is the element of deceit pag merong intent to gain plus deceit no estafa intent to gain plus Violence against person or force upon things and robbery. Okay, um, somebody is raising their hand. What's your question? Yes. Sir, good afternoon, po. Mm -mm. Good afternoon. Sir, tanong mo lang po. Halimbawa po, halimbawa po may loaner po. Tapos wala pong contract na binigay dun sa naghiram ng pera. Tapos po, ano, hindi na nagbayad yung nangutang. Ano po yun, sir? Ano pa rin po yun sa estapa? Kahit po wala pong kasulatan, ganun po, agreement. Yeah, um, again, is there any deceit? Is there any pangluloko in the, in the transaction? Uh, kahit po wala pong written agreement, sir? Kahit walang written agreement, no? Uh, again, this is also a misconception in contracts, no? Contracts can be written or unwritten. It can be verbal or oral. A contract need not to be in a specific form except for formal contracts such as last will and testament. Those are, or deed of donation. Those are example of formal contracts whereby there is a specified format for it. But a deed of sale is valid a loan more a loan contract is valid even if it is unwritten then again 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 ladies and gentlemen class estafa e involves deceit meron bang deceit example ng mga deceit is the pyramiding scam diba you were you were promised no that, that, that there will be a uh, bibigyan ka ng ganito kalaking returns provided that you will pay you will give them this kind of money so and so may mga pa may ginagawa pa silang mga advertisement mga testimonials to to convince the people to invest eh wala naman talaga silang um legitimate business to earn such kind of money, nero rolling lang nila ang pera, that is a form of deceit. That is estafa. Estafa is may pangluloko. Pag walang pangluloko, even if the interest is usurious, meaning malaki masyado ang interest, as long as you know that the interest is peg at 10% per day, whatever it is, kahit gano'ng kataas, hindi pa rin yan estafa because you were not deceived into entering the contract. Okay? Did I answer your question, Miss Donalyn? Uh, 
po, sir. Thank you po. Okay. How about Mr. Tolentino? Do, do you um, understand staff already? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. So... So, these are the specific forms of staffa, no? Number one, staffa by taking undue advantage of a si of the signature in blank. No? Diba? Meron ganyan. You are only authorized, no? There are cases, especially checks, no? There are cases that reach Supreme Court whereby uh, a trusted person or trusted employee were given blank checks in order to um to pay no kasi for example in one case uh yung employee the employer no left a blank check with the instruction to put the amount the put to put the amount uh of money of the to put the amount of money that will be collected or that will be billed no pang they are still waiting for a billing and this first billing meaning yung demand to pay so parang may binili si amo no may binibili si amo, may binili si amo na goods hindi pa niya alam magkano lahat but the the, the employer needs to le uh, needs to leave the country so he just um left a blank check to that to that specific employee upon a specific instruction to only put the amount to be the amount billed on the check so let's say for example the 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 company billed them the amount of 10000 so instead of 10000 putting it 10000 nilagyan 100000 so again the person who um who filled up the amount the wrong amount is liable of staffa because nandaya siya may pandaraya, may deceit, may cheating because the instruction of the AMO is to put only the amount being billed and the amount billed was only 10,000 but mo nilagay na 100,000 so that is staffa um, undue advantage in the signature okay um, staffa by means of deceit um, false pretense, fraudulent means. This is the one that I discussed earlier, the pyramiding. No, sorry if you are involved into pyramiding, but most of the pyramiding is really a is scam. Um, pyramid. There are pyramiding that are legitimate, but you need to check with SEC. But those pyramiding who offers you or promises you over the top, no, parang it's too good to be true, then it is really too good to be true. Um, so those are parang this uh, estafa by means of deceit. No, for example, another here is I I convince no I convince people to give me money because um uh. I will double it after one month because I will be um, selling my very expensive property and the proceeds of that expensive property will be the one um, will be the one to be used in paying um, the amount that I loan plus the interest no the double interest or the double the amount no so that would be that constitute estafa if there is really no property to be sold no second if there is no in really intention on my part to pay double the amount so again pag na, na loko ka meaning you gave money because you believe on something that is lie that is a lie then that is estafa through deceit okay Staffa by post dating a check or issuing a check in payment of an obligation. Similar then sa example ko na blank signature no. Staffa by inducing another to sign any document. Like for example, um you you induce your what do you mean by induce? You parang how 
how do I translate in those into a more understand uh, more easier term okay ka uh, ah na odyok no na odyokan na odyok mo or uh, na induce you you induce uh, a person to sign something that uh, to sign any document like for example you you were able to influence your father to sign a document that is a contract of sale no contract of sale because of your father that is ignorant and because of um, trust and confidence that he has to over to you um, he signed a document that is supposedly a loan document or say a court more sinabihan mo yung father mo nga you sign this because this document is a loan agreement plan but truth be told the agreement na na sign na ng father mo is is contract of sale selling property in your favor. So, that is still estafa. Kasi, niloko mo yung father mo. Okay? Estafa by removing, concealing, or destroying a document. Um, this pertains to court records, offices, no? So, parang, if you don't like um, a criminal, if, for example, um, for example, you want to okay for example diba sa if you are working no there are records of your absences any complaints against you or whatever um ad, whatever administrative offenses that you have no that is recorded in your employees 201 files and if you want to have your employment certificate issued kasi nag-resign ka na and you want to to have uh, another um, employment and you ask for a certificate of employment the employer will check your 201 files and see if they will um, recommend you if they will have a positive recommendation so para hindi makita yung mga administrative lapses mo sinunog mo yung kinuha mo yung mga portion na negative so, that is also estafa kasi ng daya ka. Okay? Batas Pambansa Bilang 22. This is um, the bouncing, bouncing check law. No? Um, under the bouncing check law, what is punished here is the issuance of a worthless check. Okay? So, once you issue a check that is not supported with the fund, with a fund uh, or sufficient fund, then you committed a crime of batas pambansa bilang 22. Okay? This is very common, no? Kasi most of the lenders now wants the borrower to issue a post-dated check to secure payments. So, what happened is that um, those borrowers who issues um, um, post-dated checks will default in their payment because wala nga silang pera and you, they issued um, checks that are worthless or checks that are not supported with sufficient funds then once the the, the lender or the creditor will um, endorse the check for encashment or deposit it in the bank then the bank will refuse um the refuse in cashing the check because of insufficient funding or insufficient uh, accounts amount so uh that is bp22 well, the purpose is immaterial okay provided that once there is a demand no demand to pay you are informed that your check was uh, that your check bounced then there is a demand to pay and you fail to pay within 72 hours, then there is a presumption that you know that you have issued a worthless check. Yun lang ang dapat ninyong uh, intindihin sa BP22. What is also important is that a person who issued a worthless check, remember the one 
um, the first example, no, who issued a check in exchange of a furniture, that that person can be held liable for two crimes, the crime of estafa and crime of violating batas pambansa bilang twenty two. Okay, so there are two crimes: estafa for the deceit and the issuance of worthless check under batas pambansa bilang twenty two. Okay, can we have five to ten minute break? I need to rest my voice. I I am not feeling so well right now, so I just need to rest for another ten minutes. Then we will proceed to um, ano na ba tayo? Proceed to module eighteen, na ba tayo? Ah, nineteen. Okay, last four modules. Thank you.